The challenge we have at the moment in the European Union is to combine two um, antagonistic forces. One is unity and one is diversity. Um, the unity is that we want to do things together as a, common, as a European Union and we have established instruments to strengthen the unity, like the euro, like uh, the, the treaty, like uh, many of the rules we have, the, uh, the charter of, uh, of, of um, human rights. We have this unity as one of the key drivers of the whole process. And at the same time, we have diversity. We have different regions, cities, we have social diversity, we have cultural diversity. And the European Union process was always to bridge these two elements. And what we face at the moment in the European Union is that both are under extreme pressure. We need more unity because with the euro we have agreed that we build one currency, so which gives up uh, the autonomy of many member states to do whatever they want in fiscal policy, budgetary terms. With the pressure this creates at the local level or at, even at national level, with the stability and growth pact, with the uh, with the uh, with the pressure of austerity and others, and at the same time we have a growing diversity. The economic crisis has created more diversity, and also cultural diversity, political diversity. The migration crisis has really brought to the fore that on some fundamentals we have very different views how we want to proceed. So both elements, diversity and unity, are moving in different directions and the bridges which we used to build to combine the two are not working that much that people, that citizens feel that uh, we are working in a coherent way forward. And I think this is also the challenge for what we talk about here when we talk about cohesion. Because cohesion is one of the bridges to bring diversity and unity back together, um, or at least to combine it in a sensible way. You cannot do only unity because we are not a, con a continent of one size fits all. And we cannot only do diversity because we have common challenges and common thoughts. And I think the Interreg program, in all its uh, different elements, has been an example to bring this bridge together, to cooperate, to find unity, but on the basis of diversity. And I think uh, I'm a bit frustrated that the whole debate which we have on the MFF, on the whole debate on the future of the different policies, is not answering the key question how we bring these two together and how can Europe can start to deliver again for the citizen. And we are deeply worried that at the European election next year, we will get uh, the bill for this inability to convince and to work. And um, there was a key speech earlier this week from, uh, uh, on the geography of discontent. And geography of discontent has a lot to do with territories and uh, the, 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 the feeling of left behind. And this is what also is important, that we are not just talking about people, we are not just talking about policies, but we also talk about territories. And when we talk about territories, we are very close to what you do when we are talking about transnational cooperation. Maybe that as a first frame. The second frame is, of course, much closer to what you do, is about transnational cooperation. And we have here three main uh, issues. One is the macro-regional cooperation, uh, the second is the sea basin cooperation, and the cooperation along functional areas. I'm coming from the Committee of the Region, and I, uh, I can tell you we love all three of them. So we are not uh, saying one is better than the other. We, we, we have been advocating very strongly macro-regional cooperation as a way of cooperating between different levels of government and as a way to really develop an integrated area in an integrated way with the different partners involved. We are also a friend of the sea basin cooperation. The Baltic Sea, the Mediterranean, have been examples of how this can work together. Uh, we have been very closely aligned to this. We have been, um, uh, we, a lot of our members have been very active in this in the past. And then the third area is the functional areas. We also see that um, very often 
cross-border areas have more to do with each other than uh, the uh, different uh, regions in one member state. Uh, when you look at uh, the border of Germany, Holland, and uh, Belgium, this area is a functional area. And uh, if we really want to develop it further, we need to find ways how to really address the functionality of an area in a, in a proper way. So also all three of them are, are important. But we are also a bit our, um, uh, the uh, victim of our own success in a way. Because all three of them are there, there is, of course, with the challenge of reduced budget, always the question, what do we do in the future? And there is a, a ten, uh, tendency to say, OK, let's reduce the number of programs. Simplification, less let administration, much easier to handle. Let's do one and not the other, like focus only on macro-regional strategies uh, and not on others. Or to really throw everything up in the air and then to define a new way of transnational cooperation uh, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense that you really look only at the, the business or the, the regional interaction. So these are all questions which we have to address. And we are the victims of our own success because we, for example, said in the Committee of the Region, the three no's of macro-regional cooperation, no new funding, no new structures, no new uh, policies, is not, uh, we want to have three yes, in which way that there should be funding for this, there should be new ways of working. But of course, if you do so, then you have an implication on others. And particularly, when you cut the ETC budget in the way the Commission has done. And I've said that yesterday in front of the journalists, I totally cannot understand, and the committee cannot understand, that the most uh, true European part of cohesion policy, where the added value is, is clearly known, has been cut much more than other parts, and particularly um, in, in a way it has been foreseen. And uh, we are strongly opposing this, not only for uh, reasons that we want to maintain it, but also because we think that fundamentally you cannot have a second objective of cohesion policy where you only put 2.45% of the budget and the rest goes to the normal, uh, the, the mainstream programs. So we clearly said that the budget should be at least at the level uh, as it is now for the whole, so at least around 3%, 3.3% of the total allocation. We are very close with the Parliament on this in order to uh, make sure that, um, that uh, we do not have a cannibalism, uh, that one is eating in the, in the others. Because the worst what can happen is that we, we are the true European in this, start fighting against each other and not fighting the real issue is the, into, uh, the ignorance of others not to cooperate. And I think that's very important to see, and I'm very happy that the European Parliament is in a, uh, thinking in a similar way. Um, there's also the issue of which uh, troubled us quite a bit with the sea basin allocation of sea basin cooperation into transnational cooperation. We think that is not the right way forward as it is. We are not against sea basin cooperation in transnational cooperation, but not as an exclusive way of cooperating. And we are very happy that also the Parliament is thinking in this way. So we see cross-border cooperation also from maritime areas should stay in cross-border because cross-border is a very different type of animal than transnational. And um, the second, we also see that transnational should uh, continue. And we are not uh, in favor of uh, then saying it should continue only in this way or in that way. But but we have to make the case that it is really needed because of course the debate is ongoing we have the council we have the parliament and we have to prove you have to prove that there are different elements which should coexist in the future in this field and in this context there is also um, the, the question of what should uh, transnational cooperation uh, focus on and we have a clear challenge in the whole of cohesion policy. That is that the, the ones who are already well equipped are the best to implement the policies. There is also uh, some other issues which I wanted to highlight. Um, 
I know that some, some of you come from functional areas which are not from macro-regional areas. And I was representing a region in Germany with no outside border in, in the east, but not part of Baltic, not part of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the North Sea cooperation. And the only one was the Central European cooperation. And I have to say that Central Europe is, is a funny animal. Because on the one hand, it is the place where European integration takes place, but at the same time, there is no macro-regional structure in place to do so. And I think uh, the uh, transnational cooperation has to also address functional areas which have this specificity. They, they have also a historic background. Don't forget, the, the concept of middle Europe has been a very long concept. We should not, uh, uh, not for forget in that sense as well. And I think that's why I think what is important also in your workshop here today to really find the answer. What do we need it for? What can we deliver? What contribution can transnational cooperation make for cohesion policy, but also for the wider European project? And what is our joint vision of the different instruments, sea basin, macro regional, and functional areas for transnational cooperation in the future? So I invite you to this debate. I'm very happy to stay with you and take some things on board. I can assure you that also our rapporteur is very keen to hear what you have to say. And I can also assure that um, Pascal Arimo in the European Parliament is very keen to stay in touch to discuss these things further. So this is the right time to discuss it. And I wish you all a very exciting workshop and see you later. Thank you.